I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you, thank you, Sam I am. A nice little public performance of uh, somebody else's copyrighted work, um, one that I think we heard, uh, heard, at the, heard on the floor of the Senate too. Um, so I'm going to just do a quick fair use analysis. I mean, I just did this. I did a public performance of somebody else's, uh, somebody else's work. Um, you know, we looked at, uh, uh, Nick talked about the, the four factors of fair use, purpose and character of the use. I think I was, uh, you know, I'm hoping, I'm not getting any money out of this particular presentation. Um, nature of the copyrighted work, well, it's pretty, pretty copyrighted. Uh, it deserves a lot of copyright protection. Um, non and substantiality, I just use a small portion of that. Uh, and the effect on the marketplace, I guess I'm going to discourage you from taking that and versus buying the book. Please buy the book, it's a great book. Um, and so what I want to spend a few minutes just sort of talking about um, uh, fair, use, uh, fair use analyses, some of the other um, kind of um, building on uh, some of the comments that we've heard, heard earlier here this afternoon, um, and, and show you a little bit of how we try to apply them, particularly um, um, in some of, the, some of the digital projects we're trying to, do, we, uh, try to do in the libraries to provide resources available to, to scholars and researchers. Um, we, there was a lot of talk about, yes, it's copyrighted, and, and there are you know, these, this, this huge thing to take advantage called fair use. Um, the, the kind of first point I want to make, sometimes people call this fair game. There are actually a lot of things that you can do that will never be infringing because they are not an infringement of copyright. One is you own the work. It's your own. Now, in this case, I think uh, Kendrick talked about it, somebody who actually transferred copyright of their, their work. But if, if you own it, you can do that, right? Public domain. We have a good sense of what materials are in the public domain. Uh, the, the use, your use of it is not one of those exclusive rights that were showed up on one of those slides. So, um, so uh, I think the, the example there was the, uh, the copyright it goes to the expression of the idea, but not the idea itself. Um, there are the, the most common example we think about, like in the book world, uh, it was described that there's the first sale doctrine, but you buy a book, you own that copy. You don't own the copyright, you own that copy. You can sell it, you can do, it, do whatever you want, that's your copy of that. Um, so, so these kinds of things are never infringing. Um, there's a, a statutory exception, which I'm going to come back to in a second, but the, the big statutory exception we all like and, and make, take advantage of is fair use, but there are others. Um, or you have permission, um, and permission comes in a wide variety of ways. It, it, you, know, you have a license, you have an implied license. So, uh, you talked about some of the, the um, uh, streamlining, streamlining of licensing as a, as a way to um, uh, take advantage of, of, you know, this is not a fair use test now. It's, it's not fair use. You're actually, you've been given permission. I think on the flyer we talked about um, Creative Commons and the, you, you saw sort of that whole world of Creative Commons is a license. And it's, it's the person who owns it saying, I'm giving you this license to do X, Y, and Z with that. The, uh, one of the co conversations Jim and I had a, a while ago, about you know, years ago probably, about um, fair use, and, and I, there's, a, there's a sense, I think, a good sense, um, that, uh, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have some really clear guidelines uh, about fair use? And uh, there, there, are, there are examples in some of those other statutory exceptions that are, provide some very clear guidelines. So, for example, if you, if you run a food or a drinking establishment, if it's under 3,750 square feet versus over 3,750 square feet. Now, and then, if that in, uh, includes the, cu the customer parking lot, so long as the parking lot is not used for other purposes. And you can have up to six loudspeakers, but only four of them can be in one room. That's one of the exceptions for, for, bar, for food and drinking establishments. Very clear red line. Uh, so when you're over that line, you're, you're in the wrong here. Um, I think one of the, one of the, the, the disadvantage of fair use is its, is its advantage, too. It's very vague. Every point of it is vague. So I guess the maybe the second or third last point I want to make is um, the, uh, it, it's, it's, 
there, there, is no, uh, there, there is no copyright compliance officer, in the, for example, on this campus. So you have, we have access to general counsel. General counsel is a fantastic resource for the simplest, dumbest questions that you might have. Um, and I encourage you to take advantage of that. You're not going to go to the general counsel and they're going to say fair use, fair use, not fair use, fair use. Um, but but the, uh, because, and, and really it's because they don't have the, the knowledge of your use to be able to actually make that. What they're going to, the best they can do is, is sort of help you think through what some of these issues are. Um, because it, when it comes down to it, it's, it's your use of this material. So you're the one with the, um, uh, with sort of all the key components that can make the, make the uh, fair use determination. The, uh, and, and so you, you know, we talked about sort of this idea of this, it's a fair use defense. Um, but what, uh, you'll, you, you're, what you're doing when you're doing this sort of fair use analysis is um, imagining, talking through what your defense will be if you need to, if you need to defend this use. Um, and again, sort of, you're the only one who can make that determination. And ultimately, the U.S. Supreme Court's the only one who can tell you if you're right or wrong. Um, and that's only because they get the final word in this. So it's it's messy, but there there are ways to, to sort of step through this. So the last um, the last piece of uh, statement I want to make then along these lines is that we're we're doing these whether we call them various analyses or not. We're doing these, making these determinations constantly. Uh, anytime you give a, a class, anytime you write, um, many times when you write a tweet, I mean, we, we're, you're, you're thinking this through all the time, even though you might not be thinking, you know, factor one, factor two, factor three. Um, and, and, it's, and it's because, um, because some of this is so obvious that, uh, that your use of somebody else's, of somebody else's works um, is, is the right thing to do. It's just so obvious that you don't need to, um, you don't need to, this is the kind of thing you do all the time and you don't need to ponder it. There's a, um, what we do like with some of the uh, applications in, in the library, uh, sometimes we're doing maybe a digital collections project, there, there are some, uh, some things that are that obvious to us and, you know, the, in fact, the fair use analysis on that from my, in, in my head, the fair use analysis on that is, of course it's fair use. Why? Because last time I thought about it, it was fair use too. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so obvious. Um, if something's a little bit, um, you know, then when something gets to the, the next level, it's like, oh, this is interesting. I wonder if this is sort of the right thing to do, to use this particular clip or this length of it. Um, there, there are some very handy tools. Um, the general counsel here puts out a fair use checklist. Um, it's a fair use checklist that looks, uh, is probably copied from other fair use checklists. <laughs> oh, the irony. Uh, the, uh, and, and so there's, a, there's some, some very simple questions there. It's a little check-off thing. It's not, there's no right answer. There's no, uh, you need seven yeses to, to pass, again, because it's, it's not that simple. But, but it's sort of just a very sort of step through of, okay, yeah, I've read through this checklist. I, I, I don't, uh, I, could, I could recreate this defense if I were, if anything were ever to happen. But in the meantime, I've, I've de determined for my own sake, yeah, this is the right thing to do, or now this is pushing it. There are times when you when you want to do something that uh, uh, perhaps without permission that you want to you're taking what you know let's say more of an aggressive position on it, and we've had that a few times with with projects. We had this very recently with a, we're doing a large digitization of Fluxus artworks, um, and boy, this is uh, this is sort of new territory. Something we've uh, uh, really need to think through. And so in this case, we, this is sort of an extreme example of, we actually pull this checklist out, we get together, we talk about it, we, or we um, but you know, you can do this individually and sort of step through. And in this case, I actually, in fact, I have, I've done this three times in the past, you know, seven years, so I can actually show you, I've done these. These are, this is my fair use defense for that Fluxus project, um, where, it, where it's such an aggressive stance that I've gone, gone to the trouble of making notes to myself about, yeah, how, do, how, do, how did we think this through? Why do I think this is right? This is the example of the kind of thing that I went to the general counsel's office. I'm like, okay, I've done, I've done my homework on here. Uh, what, what do you think? And again, you're not gonna get a thumbs up or thumbs down, but you'll get an answer of, uh, boy, I don't think I could 
I don't, I think you might be putting the university in an awkward position if you take that <laughs> point of view. But you usually won't. It'll, it'll be um, sort of helping you, you know, helping you create that sort of thing. And then for, for me, for, for a lot of times, and that's, this is a real, this is my fair use defense. That goes a long way. If, if in the worst case scenario, you, you know, you ever do get, there's some sort of litigation. Um, the, the, your defense, your um, you know, uh, thoughtfulness about this makes uh, a huge difference in how it's, in how it's determined. And so I, I, I know I'm over time or pushing it. So the last comment I'll say then about that is, um, Kemper mentioned these, the documentary filmmakers' best practices, and I think said something about uh, you know, community best practices um, are very real and hold a lot of persuasiveness with, with what's considered right and what's considered wrong. It's sort of, you know, if all my friends jump off the bridge, th there is something real about that in, 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 in fair use analysis. And uh, the, the documentary filmmakers uh, came out of the um, uh, American University Center for Social Media. Um, they, that's, a, that's a group that's been putting out best practice documents for a lot of different uh, categories. So there's documentary filmmakers, they have one for film studies, for media literacy, for video remix, for communication scholars, um, for poets, for dancers. Um, and one that we use a lot is for academic and research libraries. But these are some really uh, thoughtful, again, now I can tell you, yes, this is fair, no, that's not. But they've done a lot of the homework of this is how the rest of your peers, your colleagues are thinking this through and, and making their um, M making their case, so this is this will help you. So that, that's a very yes. It can. It, it's you know. It's all this. It depends, and there's no right answer. And you know, until you get sued. But on the other hand, there there are some real practical things you can do to think think, think through specific situations. And I guess I'll put a plug for uh, several of us with the library are, are always happy to sit down and talk with people that help think that through too. And I'll turn this back to Jim.